changed the lives of a lot of people. Uh, almost 14 years ago, <clears throat> Columbine High School, the worst high school shooting in America's history took place. And on that tragic day, there were 13 people who were murdered, and the two boys who did the shootings committed suicide. <clears throat> and I wish I had time to share all of their stories, because each one of these uh, victims have a story that needs to be shared. I don't have time to share all of their stories, but I do want you to notice at the bottom right-hand side of the picture that you're looking at, there's a, the one adult who was killed that day. He was a teacher and a coach. His name is Dave Sanders. And they, his family are close friends of ours, and this man will always be a hero to me. So I mentioned him because uh, he could have easily saved his life that day. When the shooting started, Dave was in the cafeteria. <coughs> he could have run. <coughs> Excuse me. He could have easily run for his life, but he chose not to. Instead, he ran back into the school, jumped on a table in the cafeteria, and. Uh, and yelled for the kids to get out. And the police say he saved dozens, if not hundreds of lives that day. He then ran up some stairs, and in just a few minutes you'll see about the spot where his picture is, you'll see the last uh, picture ever taken of Dave Sanders as he's running up some stairs toward the shooting. He ran past the library where my son was at, and uh, he challenged the two boys to drop their guns and to, uh, to stop what they were doing. And when they wouldn't, he turned, they rudely shot him in the back. He stumbled into a classroom where he bled to death in the next few minutes. So I want to honor Dave as well as the students that were killed that day. But I am here to share one story, and that's the story of my daughter, Rachel. My wife and I have uh, eight children between us, and we have ten and a half grandkids. We got one in the shoot. <laughs> and, uh, we have a lot of in-laws and outlaws in our family. And in fact, one of our in-laws, she's not an outlaw, is with me today. She's a representative for your state. We have 17 representatives that cover the United States. And Belinda is back in the corner. I'm glad to be here with her today. But uh, when we get together, there's not enough room in our house anymore for family reunions or, or holidays. So sometimes we go rent a place. But no matter how large our family gets, there's always a missing spot there. And that spot represents Rachel. And if you've lost a brother or a sister or a child, then you know what I'm talking about. There's always an empty place. About a month before Rachel was killed, she was the first one to be shot and killed that day. She, was, uh, she wrote an essay for her fifth period class, and we found it underneath her bed. It was called the mattress springs, two pieces of paper stapled together. And it was, she called it My Ethics, My Codes of Life. And in this essay, Rachel challenged her reader to start what she called a chain reaction of kindness and compassion. She said, I have this theory. If one person will go out of their way to show compassion, it will start a chain reaction of the same. People will never know how far old kindness can go. I want you to just think with me for a moment about the statement that I just quoted. She said, if one person, not a crowd, if one person will go out of their way, inconvenient themselves, not random act of kindness, but purposeful act of kindness. If one person would go out of their way to show compassion, not just feel compassion. It's easy to feel compassion. It's another thing to show compassion. Sometimes I go to movies and I feel compassion for fictitious characters that don't even exist. So it's easy to feel compassion, but to show compassion, she said it will start a chain reaction of the same. What you're about to see is a video clip from a television documentary on Rachel's life that tells a little bit more about these two pages that she wrote. Compassion is the greatest form of love humans have to offer. A month before Rachel died, she wrote a two-page essay called My Ethics and My Codes of Life. And in that essay, she challenged her reader twice to start a chain.